Hi guys, in this video we're going to be covering metallic bonding, the properties of metals, alloys and a summary. Along with ionic and covalent, metallic bonding is one of the three types of bonding that you'll need to know about for your exam. And as the name suggests, it's the bonding that's present within metals. Metals have what is known as a giant structure, where the atoms are arranged into a regular pattern. If you've watched our video on giant ionic compounds or giant covalent molecules, you'll know that the word giant here means contains lots of atoms, with the exact number of atoms contained within a metal, depending on how big the piece of metal is. In this diagram, you can see an example of the regular pattern formed in the metallic bond, where the metal atoms are arranged in layers. This is a 2D or flat representation of metallic bonding, but in reality, this regular pattern continues in 3D. Metallic bonding is simpler than ionic or covalent bonding, as there isn't any transfer or sharing of electrons. The distinctive feature is that the outer shell electrons of the atoms are all free to move. And the electrons in metallic bonding are often described as delocalized, which just means that they aren't associated with a particular atom or bond. The outer shell electrons from each metal atom, which are shown here as red dots, are free to move through a structure which is made up of the remaining metal ions, which have a positive charge due to the loss of the associated negatively charged electrons. However, overall, the charges will still balance out. It's just that the positive and negative charges have become separated as these electrons have become delocalized. There's still a really strong force of attraction between these positive metal ions and the delocalized electrons. And it's this electrostatic attraction between the positive and the negative which is what is forming the metallic bond. Metallic bonds are the strong electrostatic forces of attraction between delocalized electrons and closely packed, positively charged metal ions. Understanding metallic bonding is key to explaining the distinct properties of metals. For example, because the electrostatic forces in metallic bonding are so strong, metals have very high melting and boiling points. This is why all metals apart from mercury are solid at room temperature. And the temperature would need to reach 1064 degrees Celsius in order to melt gold. Remembering that overcoming strong electrostatic forces requires a lot of energy, therefore resulting in higher melting or boiling points. Another characteristic property of metals is that they are really good conductors of heat and electricity, which follows directly from their structure in which delocalized electrons can carry current or thermal energy throughout the metal. This follows from the fact that conduction of electricity requires charged particles, such as ions or electrons, that are free to move. And this is exactly what you have in metallic bonding. Metals are also malleable, which means that they can be bent or twisted out of shape by the application of a force. This malleability originates from the metallic bonding structure, in which atoms form layers which are then able to slide over each other. For example, in this diagram you can see this clear layered structure, in which this top layer can slide over the layer below, retaining the strong metallic bonding within each layer. This layered structure means that metals can be bent, hammered or rolled without breaking. A final point that you can see from this diagram is that metals have high densities. This is because they contain lots of ions packed close together with not very many gaps within their structure. We can therefore say that metals are generally malleable, shiny solids, which have high melting points, high densities, and good conductivity of both heat and electricity. However, sometimes pure metals are too soft in order to be useful. In these instances, we often use what is called alloys instead. These are either a mixture of two metals or a mixture of a metal with a non-metal. The addition of the other element makes the alloy harder and more useful. This is because different elements have different sized atoms. And therefore, adding another element to a metal will distort the layers of atoms that are formed in metallic bonding. We can see this in this diagram where the metal atoms have been shown in blue and the atoms of the added element have been shown in black. You can see that the metallic structure is no longer arranged in those clean layers that we have seen previously. The result is that it is more difficult for the layers to slide over each other and this is what makes alloys harder than pure metals because you need to apply more force in order to distort or break this structure. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.